I want to introduce you to our guest today. Micah Meyer is the founder and director of the Plaza Hotel Finishing Program with Beaumont Etiquette. And she has two books, like I said. One is sitting here in front of me called Ah, oh, Yay! <laughs> Business Etiquette Made Easy. I love it so much. And um, it's just so fun, Micah, to read all of the tips that you have. And I think what's been really interesting for me is that it's not just do this, don't do this, but it's really kind of a who you are and what you want to exude and what you want people to know about you just from no words, right? That's exactly right. And I think, you know, etiquette has this very, um, it, it's a, it almost has a negative connotation a it lot does. of the times. And I spend a lot of time kind of explaining to everybody and which I do, you know, in the beginning of both of the books by saying that etiquette is just about respect and showing people respect and, and kindness and consideration and thinking about what other people need before they even know they need it. And, you know, whether it's love or support or, or having, you know, masks available, whatever it might be, um, that's all it is. So once you kind of deconstruct etiquette and think of it in that way, it becomes much more approachable and usable every day. I'm currently looking at, which is your newest book, is specifically for business etiquette. But I think that the way that you describe it is perfect because in every situation in all of our lives, we need to understand that it is about respect and it's making people feel comfortable around you and making sure that they can understand who you are just from yeah. the way that you carry yourself, right? That's exactly right. It's about teaching confidence through etiquette. You yeah. know, like that's what I get to do. And so when you're learning these tips, whether it's networking and how to network on Zoom or, you know... <laughs> being in person, whatever it might be, it's always, it's their tips that help you feel more confident going into a different situation. And in my, the first book, which is my yellow one called Modern Etiquette Mean Easy, that's my social etiquette book. And the, the first chapter um, is actually where I'm from Sarasota. If, I don't know if anybody knows that, but that's, I'm born and raised, Sarasota High School graduate, Gulf Coast girl. So I put that first chapter in there very intentionally to show that you don't need to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I kind of always say, I don't know that I even touched a piece of real silver until I was an adult, but I, I wanted people to know my upbringing um, was very casual. I was, I grew up kind of barefoot on the beaches, uh, Siesta Key. You know, for me, that's, it's, it's not about, you know, only using etiquette in fancy occasions and not just on the wedding day or just on the event day. It's using it leading up to those moments. Um, it's, it's closing a business deal because of how you hold yourself, how you follow up with a client or a potential client um, that, that matter and that you can really make a difference with a few of these soft skills. Micah, before I get into some of the tips and questions that I have for you, can you just tell everybody that's here a little bit about kind of you said you grew up in Sarasota and I know so many of us are very familiar with the area um, but could you just tell us a little bit about how you went from there to where you are now which is in New York City and working with the plaza yeah uh, yeah so I so I stayed in Sarasota all through um, high school and then went to University of Florida um, and then the day I graduated I packed up my things and headed to New York uh, I was there two days after I graduated from UF and um, I specialize in communications and PR. So I worked at a PR firm in New York. Then I ended up in England. I, I went for a man. I went for now my husband, uh, but I went for love. And at the time I landed in England and I had all these clients that I had, you know, I had no idea. I would go to these really nice restaurants, really nice events, networking events social events, and I just didn't feel confident. I knew there was a certain way to hold a wine glass or to approach someone, to introduce myself. What do you do if you forget someone's name? I knew that there are ways to do this. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. So it was actually my boyfriend at the time, now husband, who said, Micah, you really need to take an etiquette class. This is, you know, <clears throat> because you can grow up without a lot of etiquette, but at some point you have to take it upon yourself to, to learn it, right? You can't forever say, well, I grew up casually and I just didn't learn that. At some point it's like, okay, you have to do this. So I went to my first etiquette course in London and I was mind blown. I was absolutely mind blown about what I learned. I thought I was just gonna learn about forks and knives and call it a day. 
but she had me in this ballroom and she taught me all these soft skills and was like, okay, go introduce yourself to that man. And I was like, oh, but it was so practical and so usable <clears throat> that I could not get enough of it. So at the end of the first chapter of my book, I basically go from growing up in Sarasota, Florida um, to serving Prince Charles, a gin and tonic. Um, and kind of that's the story about how I, how I got there. So I started teaching in England, just parties, little parties. And before long, I had um, more requests. So I quit my job and started Beaumont Etiquette in, uh, in London and then moved it to New York and started working at the Plaza Hotel uh, about six years ago now. I literally, the truth is, I walked in and I, I pitched it. I, I literally just walked in and pitched it. And I pitched it like I already got the job which I think is really important to do in any of your pitches for any new business, generally speaking. Um, as an entrepreneur, even today, I'll go in with a pitch to a new client or a potential new client like I already have it. So I, I use words like, then we can build this, then we'll approach it like that, then we'll have it covered. And people just start thinking of you as their planner or as their, you know, as their kind of host in whatever situation it might be. So just right. a couple little things there that I still use today just speaking it the way that you want it to the outcome to be is exactly there's so much in the power of persuasion that when people don't even realize that you're doing it right it's just the confidence and that kind of the body language that you use as you're speaking to people and just just doing it because if you never ask you're certainly not going to get a yes but you have exactly. to exactly Exactly. And, and like the little things like you think of when you think of body language or things like that, it seems so basic, but in it, one of the things I love to teach are tiny little techniques, like in, in the, and I think the second book I include left eye likable. So how to come across more likable. So when you are networking or say you're with a client, you look at their left eye. So it's unnatural for us as humans to look into the left eye. So if we are facing each other in person, I look into your left eye. What I'm doing is I'm actually leaning in. Um, so I'm breaking my posture and I'm coming in, which shows compassion, likability. And then if I need to switch gears and you say, so Mike, it was so nice to meet you. So how, why should I choose you as you know, my event coordinator? Then I switch eyes, I go to the right eye and that causes me to square my shoulders. I take on a more authoritative stance and I don't change my voice at all or my tone. And then I go into, I'm definitely the right person for you because X, Y, and Z. And a lot of your pitch and a lot of your networking, it's all about your voice. That is such a great tip. I love that so much because it really helps you to change your body language without having to overthink it too much, right? Exactly. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting about the book is that you said that in a, in a recent study, in a Harvard-Stanford study concluded that one success, particularly in the workplace, is based 85% on social skills and less than 15% on technical skills. Yes. Isn't that wild when you actually think about that? Yes. That statistic. And it's, it's crazy. So really what that means, if you deconstruct it, it means that you could be the smartest person in this Zoom call, you could be the smartest person in a room. You could be dressed to the nines, you look at the part, you feel the part, but if you walk in and you don't know how to socially connect with people, yes. then you're not, you're not where you could be. And the mm -hmm. good thing though, a lot of people think you have to be born with emotional intelligence, right? This is IQ versus EQ. Okay. You have to be born with EQ. It's not the case. Um, you can learn emotional intelligence and that's what, so I always say I would rather have a higher EQ than IQ any day because of that statistic. But I also think I would rather have room to grow, which is very, is much easier to do with emotional intelligence and just understanding how to make people feel comfortable or, um, you know, how to be likable, how to, I always say, you know, how to evoke charisma or charm. Um, these are all learned skills that, that you can easily um, kind of achieve. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love, you also said in the book that anyone who exudes confidence wins at business every time. Every single time. Every single time. I can't even tell you the amount of people um, with the business book, kind of the, <clears throat> the history of that book is here in New York and, and nationally and even globally, we work with some of the biggest corporations and companies in the world, um, you know, from startups to Fortune 100s. And we're constantly put in the same room as the HR departments and we're constantly put in the rooms with the CEOs. And uh, after observing these really powerful, successful people, it, we just kept seeing the same exact 
qualities and characteristics over and over again. And my business partner, Ann and I, we started making a list. And that's how the book started. We okay. were like, okay, this is bonkers. Every single one of these people have the same characteristics. Let's just put them all together and everything we're noticing. So there's a lot of observational research that went into that book. And we're like, this is it. But confidence, it's somebody who walks into the room like they own it. Like they, and in the business book, we put a confidence formula. Yes. How to become more confident in any situation, how to become more authoritative in any situation. Um, and then also how to become more charming was in the first book because I'm really about formulas, I'm like easy and just like, this is what you need to do. This is how you do it. Ta-da, <clears throat> um, tried and tested. Yes, I do love that about your book, especially in the business book that you do have the formulas in there because I think a lot of times people think that some people are just confident and some people aren't. And I don't, I don't believe that that's true. I think that, you know, I tend to have a very confident personality, but there's very many times where I'll walk into a space and I'm shaking because I'm mm. so nervous, but I, it's almost like I feel like I have to put on a character and, and think, yeah. okay, this is what yeah. I have to look like on the outside right now. So can you tell us a little bit about the formula for confidence that you have in the book? Yes, of course. And one thing that I put with that formula is, is the difference between confidence and self-esteem. Yes. It's really important to know the difference and what is more important in a situation like that. Um, I'm not a big fan of huge conventions and I have to do these. I did one in Dallas earlier at the beginning of this year and it was... I think there were like 1400 people in there. That's a lot of eyeballs. And I don't mm -hmm. do well in stages like that. That's just not my thing. I always have to like mentally prepare. And in that moment, I have to remember this. So there's confidence and there's self-esteem. Self-esteem is something we need to work on over a long time, over a lifetime, right? It could take years or weeks or whatever it is to change or to improve. Mm -hmm. That's deep seated, right? Then there's confidence, which can change day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. And confidence is what's more important to project in that moment of being with the client, networking, approaching someone, being on stage. So I could have like almost, or feel like I have zero uh, self-esteem, but I could be a massive presence on that stage. But it's a little bit of an acting thing, right? It's like yeah. almost like, um, I always say, go win an Oscar. Like pretend like the cameras are on you and you have to walk into that room and you turn it on. And having yeah. that caricature almost of yourself is something that I think is hugely important. And you have to become a social chameleon, really. Yeah. In that moment, what are people looking for? And you almost want to mirror that energy. So with the um, with the confidence formula, I actually think. Let me see. I'd like to even. I have my book here. I'd yeah. like to even read you all that because I think it is important. While you're finding that, I was actually reading this to my girls yesterday. Some of you know that I have three girls and I was talking to Micah before we, we went live and I said, you know, this is something I talk to them about all the time because sometimes you are going to be put in situations where you feel like you're in over your head and you just have to own it. Or, you know, this was one that happened to my oldest daughter a couple of days ago is she went to an event where she felt like, I think I might be overdressed. Mm. And I said, you know what? You won't know till you get there. You dress for the invite and you need to own it no matter what. <laughs> you yes. just do. And, and no yes. one will question you. They'll be like, ooh, look at that girl. <laughs> and you have to go in with confidence. If that ever happens, you'd rather always be overdressed and underdressed. Yes. Have you ever heard the Oscar Wilde quote, quote it's always better to be overdressed and overeducated, right? <laughs> Yes. Um, but it's, it's, I might've butchered that quote, but it's along those lines, but, um, that is so true. And I always, if I'm afraid I'm going to be overdressed, my tip there is I always do layers so I can take something mm -hmm. off. Um, so if I'm wearing a jacket or a cropped blazer or a heel, maybe then I'll bring a flat or something like that. So you can kind of peel back if you are too dressed. I okay. love that. That's smart. Very good tip. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I also think though, if you ever are overdressed, then you have to own it. Like you, you, have have to it. you have to make it look intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, so it's called the Meyer method of, uh, confidence formula for confidence. So the first is packaging yourself. So, so it's, you know, when you walk into the room, look the part. So I will say dress for the position you want, not the one you are in. That is really important. So if you're the CEO of a company, if you're the director, if you're the founder, you need to dress like that. When you walk into the room, 
if you've got a team behind you, you want everyone to pick out who that leader is. And that often comes through the way you present yourself. Use your voice. So your voice is so important. If I came in to teach at the Plaza Hotel, you know, there's a group of 50 people and I walk in and I look the part and I, you know, feel the part. And then I say, good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about etiquette. Ugh, right? I lost you like that. I just didn't appear confident anymore. So your voice is so crucial. And it, their Toastmasters has some free PDFs that you can download a lot of their YouTube is great um, to, to learn different techniques. But I, of course, include a lot about voice in my books. But if you're better with kind of more um, visual uh, learning, then that's one that I can give you as a resource. Uh, build rapport is the next one. So um, every single time you see a new uh, client, I, I take notes on everyone, on everyone. Like I have a Rolodex of, now it's on my online, but um, mm -hmm. I call it a Rolodex. And every single person I interact with, when I met them, and one fact about them. So the next time I see you, the next time I talk to you, I can say, oh my gosh, Brittany, tell me about how, how are your daughters? I remember they were da 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 da. And right. then that person feels, and it's like, and it gives you confidence to go into a situation because you remember and they yeah. feel special. Um, understand what sparks you. This means what makes you not feel confident and not just, a, not just realizing it, but making a list. It's a very hard thing to do. Make a list and then address it. So if I don't feel confident because I don't feel like I have the right materials, the right this, the right energy, that I'm tired, I, whatever it is, then you write it down and you, you address it. Um, organize yourself. The most confident people, especially in presentations, are the most prepared. They know that presentation in and out. Um, they, they know their materials. They know what they're capable of. Um, emulate. So um, find that's the part about characters. So find a personality you admire for confidence and emulate it. Like it's, it could be a character out of a movie. It could be someone, you know, it could be your grandparent um, and then practice. So practice out of context. So really it's like walk into Subway sandwiches and with your new elevated chameleon, social chameleon voice, I have a business voice and I have a social voice. And when I walk in the Subway sandwiches, I can practice my voice. So a voice for authority and confidence, I can't stress it enough, is so important. And if you feel like, oh, my friends are going to judge me if I start talking differently all of a sudden, um, then, you know, it's something where I always say, if somebody acknowledges something where you tried to make self-improvement and it, they're using it almost to show you like, you sound different or why are you dressing differently all of a sudden? Then the way that I tackle that, I always say, Say, thank you so much for noticing. I have really been trying so hard to um, work on a, a new, you know, kind of look. So I appreciate that. So like give it to them back. That's a great tip because that is something that people are fearful of, whether it be presenting yourself on social media or as changing your voice or having a different posture is that friends and family will say, what are you doing? You know, and kind of judge you. Exactly. Not even in a mean way. They just they're like, what? I mean, and all of you can uh, and associate, I think, or, mm -hmm. or understand this. Here I am, the girl from Sarasota, Florida, that everybody, when I was living in Florida, knew me with cut off jean shorts and, um, you know, with a koozie in my hand. That's and funny. I still love those things. Don't get me wrong. But, um, <laughs> but when I went for my training, I studied for eight years, right? And, mm -hmm. and eventually I came home and people were like, you know, I got that. I got that, like, wait. Uh -huh. I know you. And I'm like, I'm still the same me. I just worked on myself and I'm a better version of, you know, some of those, some of those, um, younger traits and characteristics I had as a child. So of course I changed since then. Like, I hope right. I would have changed. Thank you for noticing. Like you have to own it. Yeah. Thank you for noticing is a great response. That is a, just a fabulous response. I think that that's a great tip for everyone to take away from this. I know that I definitely will. That's, that's, Thank you for that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about networking because you have an entire chapter in your book about networking. And here we are. This is a networking group, right? And we, I know it's a little bit different now with so much being virtual, but really the same things still apply in so many ways. So, many. so can you tell us a little bit about the importance of networking and maybe a few tips that you would tell any entrepreneur or business owner? Yes, of course. So I think networking, um, I would say half of the opportunities that I've had professionally have come through networking. Um, I think the first and most important thing is to get rid of fear. 
fear mm -hmm. in, in like, I'm afraid to approach that person. I'm afraid to email that person. I'm afraid to ask for something. If you don't ask, you don't get. Um, <clears throat> if you don't approach, you'll never meet them. Um, so I, I really, really feel like it's so important, whatever you're fearful of, to be acknowledge, acknowledge that, but then also to realize that it's made up. Fear is something that's just in our heads. It's like we, we walk into a, a door that's closed because the door is closed and it prevents us from going into the, to the other room. But we also treat fear in the same way. So when I'm, ooh, oh, there's that, that client. I know I really want that. Oh, geez, there's the head of this hotel and I want to do their events, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, that is fear and that's preventing you physically from doing something. So I always say after four seconds, people are much less likely to do something. So if you think about it, do it. You just go walk up to that person. Don't think about it because also if somebody sees you like looking at them, looking at them, then it becomes yes. a little awkward and strange. You're like, I clearly want to talk, but now or they're, they're a stalker. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, mm -hmm. you see them walk straight up and suddenly you're in front of them and you have to talk. I think, you know, one, one kind of conversation, people are always like, I don't know how to, once you introduce yourself and I would say, be brave, walk yes. up and introduce yourself and be very formal about it. Um, you know, my go-to one-liner is, you know, walk in, say, you know, hello, my name is Mike. I just want to introduce myself, give a compliment. I know your work from X, Y, and Z, or I saw your this, that makes people feel instantly good. Like, oh, they recognize me. People love that. Um, yes. Compliment them. And I just wanted to introduce myself. It is so easy. Hi, I'm Micah. I, I just wanted to introduce myself and then whatever compliment. Um, right. And you don't need to know anybody. You don't need to be introduced to anybody. Um, and then once conversation, okay, so you introduce yourself, you're standing there, how on earth you keep conversation going. Yes. This is the, another networking tip that I use literally every single time I'm anywhere with a group or a new group of people or even a client sometimes. Yeah. You can use, it's called WWHC. And Brandon, you might've remembered this from the book. Um, yes. WWHC, so what, why, how, compliment is yeah. the formula. That's what, that's what the acronym stands for. And all it is, is that when you walk up to someone, you introduce yourself, then one open-ended question to start, right? It always has to be open-ended. So we're at a networking event. Oh, so is this, you know, how did you hear about this event? And then they say, oh, well, I was invited through my friend, blah, blah, blah. Then the next question you have to ask them start, has to start with a what. So what, what, why, how, compliment. So maybe the person says, oh, well, my friend Brandy brought me and, you know, I know Jordan for 10 years now and, you know, from Sarasota and that's it. And so I, and then what? So, oh, so what brought you to Sarasota? Um, maybe they say, oh, you know, I just love the weather. I would love the beach. And I wanted to start my own events company here. What and why? Ah, and then why did you choose, you know, weddings? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter again. Right. Well, I just love to make couples come together and it's so happy and loving and it feels so fulfilling to see the union, these unions. Mm -hmm. What, why, how? And how have you found business during the pandemic? Yeah. Well, it's been a challenge. We've had to reschedule a lot and everything. It's a new virtual world sometimes. What, why, how, compliment. That is so fantastic. It's so admirable. You were able to pivot like that. I mean, that is really incredible. Then you go back to your what. See, yeah. so that's how it works. I just made that up in terms of the flow, but it just shows that you can use what, why, how, compliment and converse. They don't pick it up. They don't know. They right. just, and it makes them feel good. And they leave thinking, wow, that was such a good conversation. And I feel so good. I don't know why, but I just like her. I like him, like whatever it is. So that's one technique I use that I think is almost foolproof. Yeah, I love that you talked about that in the book because I think a lot of times we talk just about how to approach someone or getting over the fear, go speak to someone, and then you introduce yourself and now what? You know, because people like to talk about themselves and not in a bad way. It's just they're more comfortable talking about themselves. So if you walk up to somebody and you just start in on a pitch or you just start saying, I'd really like to work with you, I mean, that's an immediate turnoff to me. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, no. <laughs> or, or asking in a networking event, oh, so what do you do? As a first question, I yes. wrote in the book, I said, never yes. make that your first question. It seems opportunistic. It's almost like, how can you help me? Yes. And so you always want to start off on 
you know, a, a different note. And eventually you're going to find out someone does. Mm -hmm. Often at a networking event, you can <laughs> see everyone's names ahead of time. So Google those people. If there's an, if there's a list, Google, you want to know who all these people are. So mm -hmm. it sounds, it, we'll call it strategic instead of stalking, right? But it, it's, <laughs> it makes you value the time you have. So if you have a one hour networking event and you know that these three people are people that you really want to meet, then you don't let that first you know, 30 minutes go by without making sure that you meet those people. Um, there's nothing worse than they have to leave early and suddenly you look around and they're gone. Or, you know, it just, I always say go straight in and go, you know, but start, start in a build rapport and then go in for the, for the business side of things. Gosh, and networking events, it, they're, they can be so, so overwhelming. And when you can connect with someone and you can figure out what is something that we have in common, I loved your questions because it, it honestly some of their answers it doesn't necessarily matter what they say but it can help you to find a common ground and say oh my gosh I used to live in New York too or I used to live in Sarasota too that's amazing what brought you here and I think one of the things that's really important about networking too is listening right yeah, yeah. and so making sure that you're listening to what the what they're saying so that you can lead into a question that kind of creates a conversation yeah. versus, you know, just saying, here, here's my list. Now I need to move on to the next person, you know, cause that's, right. you really want to create a connection with the people that you're there with. Completely um, agree. Yeah. I think one of the other things that you noted was that networking is about creating relationships. It's not just about meeting the most people in the room. It's about connecting and creating an actual relationship with the people that you're meeting. The tip that you gave us with you know, look up some of the people that are coming before you go and maybe pick three that you just really want to connect with and make that your focus versus how many business cards can I collect? 100% agree. And, and also knowing about the Google part, um, Brandy and I were talking about this uh, earlier is that you make sure everybody on this call, make sure you've Googled yourself. Make yes. sure every three months, at least you should be Googling yourself. I have Google alert set for my company and my name. So I always know when something happens, I've been mentioned somewhere, even if it's a photo. Now, if you're tagged in that photo, you want to know about it. Um, you know, when you're Googling yourself, you want to go to both image Google to see what pops up for images and also news, the news tab at the top of Google. So you know what people are seeing yourself, right? Before they see it. And remember 65% of people now, According to a recent Business Insider study, 65% of people, the moment they hear or see your name, will Google you. So remember that. Remember that. It's in your signature. It's, you know, and often one of the first things that comes up because of SEO is your um, your social media. So even yes. if it's private, just, just know what comes up. It's really important to always know. That's a great tip. Yeah. Everyone after this or right now, if you want to <laughs> Google yourself and make sure that you do all of those things. It is so important when, you know, not just when you're hiring, but you're right. When clients are considering you, they might Google for reviews. And then all of a sudden an article comes up, you might not have ever known was posted or just, you never know. And I think especially in our industry and in weddings and events, which most everyone here is in wedding and events, our clients are constantly Googling us to find reviews and find out what other clients are saying. So that's a really important tip. Yes. And especially your, I think anything, anyone in events, it's a competitive industry, right? Yes. And so it might come down to how friendly you, how friendly you looked and how many stars you had it. Things like that are so important. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you suggest ending a conversation at a networker. Cause I think this is really important as well. Sometimes you're like, I, I, I see someone I want to connect with. How do I cut this one off nicely? Yes. Okay. So there are a lot of issues that come with networking. Like I, sh I call them shadow networkers. Someone yes. who gets really comfortable around you and then they like follow you around. Um, but I will say if that happens to you. That means it's a compliment toward you because you made them feel comfortable. So you just mm -hmm. remember that we never burn a bridge when we want to exit a conversation. Um, so what I do, I'm just very straightforward whenever I need to move on. Um, you know, and I'll say something like, I always say, you know, it was so lovely to speak with you. It was so nice to meet you, whatever it might be. Um, please excuse me. I need to go either, you know, find my partner, my business partner. I, I, I you know, whatever it could be. Don't, you don't want to say, please excuse me. I have to go to the bathroom or I have to go 
get a drink because they could say, oh, I was looking for the bathroom or, oh yes, you know what, let's go get a drink. So that's not the best way to end. So you say it was, and then here's, so here's how you do it. So Jessica, it was so lovely to meet you. I loved hearing about your trip to Hawaii. That sounds amazing. What an amazing wedding. Um, you know, I so look forward to seeing you at the next event. Please excuse me. I do have to go find my business partner, but again, it was so lovely to meet you. Mm -hmm. And then bye, bye, bye. Uh, and that way you've told them, you've actually told them the next time you're going to see them. So you're not going to see them in 10 more minutes. Um, again, at the food station, you're going to see them then. So that's a really nice way to do it where it's understood. It's very hard then for someone to keep talking after you've said those kind of like that formula of things. Yes, because we all know, you know, you, hopefully you are going into a networking event with somewhat of an agenda. So you want to make sure that you can move on. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> and, and there always are those networkers where you just have somebody that is uncomfortable and you've made them comfortable exactly like you said. So it's really important right. to be able to end the conversation well. And also remember um, with business cards, so business cards are hinged at the end of a conversation, okay. not the beginning. So I always say people who at a networking event are like throwing out their business cards in the book I wrote, it's like throwing Mardi Gras beads is what it reminds yeah. me of. So you're like, oh, thanks. By the way, who are you? Wait, why are we exchanging details? Um, so at the end of a conversation is when I give my card. Now, if you ever don't want to give your card, it happens, right? There's, okay. um, yeah. It happens. So if you don't ever want to give your card, um, then you can just take their card and say, I'll make sure, you know, I drop you a line or something like that. So you're not giving them your cell phone, your email, your da 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 da, -da or whatever it is like that. Um, that's what I do. I would say I am very guilty of handing my business card at the beginning of a conversation, sometimes because I feel like that's what the person is wanting. And, and so I, I need to be better about kind of holding that closer to my veil and really trying to create the conversation and the relationship versus just, hi, right. yes, here's who I am. Exactly. And then it doesn't look, it does, sometimes it can look over eager too. Like, yeah, you know, um, and there have been times where I've really wanted to give my business card out as fast as I could. And it was, you know, the CEO of that bank that I've been pitching for last year, whatever it is. Yeah. But um, it really comes up much more elegantly and much more um, less like, salesy and more like, well, listen, it was so wonderful yeah. to, to meet you. And that, that story, I just can't stop thinking about that story, that trip to, that was incredible. I'd love to keep in touch. Here's my card. And if, if, and you should not make it awkward by saying, Oh, again, can I have your card? If someone wants to give you their card, they will give you their card. Okay. Um, so I always say where possible, you know, I try to avoid that unless you really, really need it. Um, but that's what I would, that's what I'd advise. I love that. Okay. And so Victoria asked, what would you say when you do not attend with your business partner? Is there another excuse that you feel like would be a good fit? Uh, you could just say something like, um, uh, please excuse me. I mean, why do you even need to give an excuse? You can say, please sure. excuse me. It was so wonderful speaking. I'm sure we'll see each other next, the next time. Um, but please do excuse me again. Thank you so much for, you know, introducing me to your team, whatever it might be, right. have a wonderful evening. Um, if you need an excuse or you feel like you do, you could say, please excuse me, I need to actually step out to make a phone call, but then you really have to step out to make a phone call. <laughs> One of the other questions really in talking about how to end a conversation is sometimes you're in conversation with someone and you're quite enjoying it and you know that there's someone standing there waiting to either introduce themselves or to say hi that wants your attention. How, how do you handle that? Yeah. So in that situation, you can, you know, if you kind of feel them next to you, um, <laughs> or sometimes they'll tap you, sometimes like, um, then yeah, it can be awkward. You know, I would, I, I wouldn't just keep talking if I felt somebody right there. Um, I'd probably turn and say hello, you know, and then they either introduce themselves or interject whatever they wanted to. And depending on who it is, if you want right. to bring them into the conversation, great. Then you would introduce them. May I please introduce you to Jack? Um, and may I please is the most formal way to introduce someone, by the way. Um, but if it's not someone that you want to bring into the conversation, then, you know, just don't, you don't, and you don't want to lose that current chat. You could, you know, say, oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I would love to chat with you. Um, you know, I'm going to finish chatting with Sarah about her upcoming big day, but I will come find you in just a few minutes. You're going to be here for another 10, 10 minutes. Okay, great, great. And then they get the hint or something like that. So you don't make them feel unimportant, but you tell them I'm going to finish my chat and then I'll come find you.
that's perfect. I know that that I feel like sometimes you can almost feel their presence and yeah. you're trying to finish this conversation and you want to of course move on to have other conversations but you really want to finish the one that you're having as well so yeah. i think that that's a grapple i have two more questions so one of them is saying thank you i know that this is so important and you talk about it in the book can you just elaborate on that a little bit so that people our listeners can understand so everyone on here hopefully has their own stationery. if you don't then it's something very easy that you can go out and get but I think a physical, I mean, saying thank you, it shows gratitude, right? At the end of the day. So sending a, a physical thank you, the reason why it's more impactful is because it's a tangible thank you. And we often don't see those anymore. So it, it literally lands on someone's desk. And I always say never start a thank you letter with thank you because okay. it's almost expected. So instead you would, you know, if you're writing a thank you letter, somebody just sent me, it's sitting here. I just opened it right before this call. Um, but somebody just sent me a thank you and it has the wax seal. Love it. And then this is not a text, which I love. <laughs> I think this is hilarious. I'm going to put this on my Instagram stories later. It's just a tangible, beautiful little card and I love it. And I'm probably going to put it on my bulletin board because people don't, send thank yous enough. So it's, they it's don't. Important. Yeah. And how cute is that? You'll always remember that thank you card because it says this is not a text, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of poking fun at the fact that we do. One, I don't think that we say thank you nearly enough, but I also think that it's, I don't know, it's just memorable to get a piece of mail, like you said, and we often rely on email. It just gets lost in the inbox sometimes. So exactly. And Victoria just said they're from Kate Spade. So thank you for that. <laughs> Good job, Victoria. Yeah, Victoria is yeah. amazing. Of course, yeah. she has those cards, Victoria. <laughs> I, I so love chic. You. They're very cute. She is so chic. I love that. That is wonderful. Okay, so the last question, and I think that this is one that we all struggle with. So I thought that I would ask this last, so we can walk away with it. But is if you forget someone's name, you okay. had some great tips on this, and I feel like I use this all the time with my husband. <laughs> Good. Okay. So my favorite, I have a bunch of tips on this one, but just kind of summarizing a few. Um, my favorite one is to say you're talking to Joanna and Joanna and I have been chatting for 10 minutes and either if you just met Joanna today, then it's absolutely fine. If after a few minutes and you need to introduce Joanna to somebody, if you just met her that day, it's absolutely fine to say, please excuse me. I have somehow, you know, and you don't want to say forgotten their name because it makes them feel like, oh, you forgot me. Great. Um, you, so you wouldn't say, I forgot your name. You say, I'm so sorry. Can you please remind me of your name? And she said, Joanna, oh my gosh, of course, Joanna. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I forgot that. Or sorry, how I didn't forget that. How I um, didn't remember that. Right. And then you would introduce her to whoever. Now, the trick that I use all the time, if my business partner or colleague or husband or friend, anybody that I'm with at a networking event is this. So if Joanna is standing here and my husband's name is Marco, and if Marco's over there, then what I'll do, if I know Joanna, I can remember Joanna has two boys. They go to the same summer camp as my kids. I know things about Joanna. I just can't remember her name. Mm -hmm. And that's where you don't ever want to say, can you please remind me of your name? Because that's <laughs> offensive. Right. So you would then say, you know what? I would love to introduce you to my husband. He would love the story. And you say, Marco, Marco, or walk over and say, please meet my husband, Marco. And then hopefully <laughs> Marco, which he's pretty good. He puts out his hand to shake or now, not during the pandemic, but hello. So nice to meet you. I'm Marco. And then she'd say, hello, I'm Joanna. But then the key is you have to jump in and say, so Joanna and I were just talking about da, 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 da. so that Joanna misses the, bo the beat that you had no idea what her name was. So then you would say something factual about the conversation you just had. So that's the focus and not that you did not say her name. So that's one thing that you can do. And, and I always walk into a room, any networking event, and I will never introduce myself unless I'm 100% sure I've never met that person. Oh my gosh, this is the worst for If me. you walk in and you say, hello, hi, hello, hello, I'm Micah. And they say, yes, Micah, we met last mm -hmm. Sunday. Or yes, you planned my wedding last year. Or yes, Micah, we met at your class at the plaza. That it just feels, oh, it's like hurtful to them, which we never want yes. to do. So instead, I walk in and say, it's so lovely to see everyone. And then let Joanna put out her hand and say, hello, my name's Joanna. Hi, Joanna, it's nice to meet you. Rather than, hi, I'm Micah. Yes, I'm Joanna. Yes, yes. yes. our kids we know each in other. class. 
you know, or whatever it might be. So those are my little secrets. I have made that last mistake before. And I feel like I, you just want to crawl in a hole it's because horrible. you just think I never would want to make someone feel that way. And I genuinely have a terrible memory, not an excuse, but I do. And so it's just, you never would want to make someone feel that way, but I have my husband for sure. Anytime he's attending a networking event with me, I tell him before we walk in, <laughs> remember, if I introduce you to someone, I do not know their name. So I need you to <laughs> play the role. Okay. That's right. like, delegate, delegate. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so helpful. Oh my gosh. I love it. Well, Micah, this has been so fun. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you being part of this. And can you tell everybody here where they can get your books, your two books, and where they can find you online? Ah, oh, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, so my books are, so this is the business, business etiquette made easy. Um, and the first book, both of these books are this are new this year. Um, I was busy last year. Um, and then this is modern etiquette made easy. My first book about social etiquette. And, um, we touched on weddings and some events in this one. And, um, both of those are available on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, all of those places. And my website is BeaumontEtiquette.com, which is Bees and Boy Beaumont. And I'm on YouTube, Instagram, social media, TikTok, name it. Um, I'm there. So it's at M-Y-K-A-M-E-I-E-R, at Micah Meyer. And I do lots of fun little etiquette videos and tips and tricks and answer all your questions there too. So Yesterday, I was actually with another industry friend, and I said, you know, tomorrow I get to go interview Micah Meyer. I'm so excited, and I was telling her what you teach on, and she said, I actually just learned how to eat soup the correct way from a reel, and I said, I guarantee you it was hers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah. her reel on this, and so, yes, you definitely have some really fun um, education out online, so you guys That's go so follow funny. Micah. She does a lot of fun reels and, and videos and YouTube, so thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much.